Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at another 100 card Brawl deck with Belladros Witherbloom as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The 7 mana 4 4 legendary Elder Dragon with Flying says at the beginning of each upkeep we get to make a 1 1 black and green past creature token that when it dies gains 1 life and we can pay 10 life at any time to untap all lands we control but we can only activate this once each turn. So there's a few different ways we could build around Belladros. In my experience testing the deck, we cannot really count on Belladros sticking around for long, so we don't want to synergize too much with the pest tokens. Instead, we want to try and maximize that pay 10 life ability so we can untap all our lands and potentially cast two powerful spells in the same turn. So to maximize that ability, we do need a lot of ramp, ways to put additional lands in place so we can cast Belladros in the first place, and then have a lot of mana to then untap with the ability. So we've got a lot of ramp with at 2 mana into the north to find a snow-covered land. We've got Beneath the Sands, Cultivate, Grow from the Ashes, which can also be kicked for 2 additional mana, Omen of the Hunt and Roiling Regrowth, that can all get an additional land in play. Then at 4 mana we've got Root, Path and Vastwood Surge, that can potentially get 2 lands in play. Vastwood Surge also nice to kick if we do have a few pests in play. And then Binding the Old Gods and Death Sprout are both removal spells that can also find an extra land. And Solemn Simulacrum, a creature that searches for a land when it enters a battlefield. And then last but not least, Hour of Promise at 5 mana can search your library for 2 of any type of land, so they don't have to be basic lands, which means we're often going to find our one copy of Field of the Dead, which is definitely a nice incentive to have all these one-off lands in a mana base, as so we'll be able to make a 2-2 zombie token when a land enters a battlefield if we have 7 or more lands in play with different names, and that's also the reason why we have this split of regular basic lands and snow-covered basic lands, also gives us more snow lands to search with into the north, but just diversifies the names of the lands we have to make zombies with Field of the Dead, so Hour of Promise can search that up as well, and we also have a few deserts in the mana base to potentially make those extra zombie tokens from Hour of Promise, and then Primal Command doesn't search for lanes, but can potentially find creatures that search for lanes, like our Ulvenwald Hydra. That is another way to find our Field of the Dead, because the Hydra doesn't specify searching up a basic land when it enters a battlefield, and then a powerful reach creature with power toughness equal to the number of lanes we control, and then Beanstalk Giant, essentially a 3-mana ramp spell that later gives us a creature to cast as well. So plenty of ways to find lands, and as we'll take a look at the rest of the deck, we have even more ramp with cards like Wolf Willow Haven that enchants one of our lands producing additional green mana, Arcane Signet and Cold Steel Heart additional 2 mana ramp artifacts. Of course we prefer facts that search for land, which we can then untap with Belladros' ability, but it's still nice to have a few extra ways to ramp at 2 mana. And then at 3 mana we also have Gift of Paradise that can enchant one of our lands and gains 3 life when it enters a battlefield, and then makes 1 additional mana, so that also still works with Belladros' ability. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got some cheap interaction with the Blood Chief's Thirst and Fatal Push. Plenty of ways to enable Revolt for Fatal Push between all our fetch lands here, which we saw, that can search for lands and enable Revolt for us. Then we also have Abundant Harvest as a nice 1 mana cantrip, and Erebos' Intervention, a powerful instant that can also leverage our mana advantage to gain a ton of life. Then at 2 mana we've got more removal with Chainer's Edict, which can also be flashed back for 7 mana, and with all the ramp that's quite doable. We've got Doom Blade and Heartless Act as more spot removal, and then we've got Maze Mind Tome as card draw, nice mana sink to potentially use all that extra mana on to draw extra cards, as well as Treasure Map, which will eventually transform into a land that can draw extra cards with our treasures, and Torment of Hailfire, a nice finisher once we have access to a ton of mana, we can repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses 3 life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. So this can potentially kill the opponent on the spot with enough mana. Then at 3 mana we've got Murder Strider as a removal spell in creature form. Can also turn into a 2-3 lifelinking creature afterwards. That can help us potentially pay for the 10 life. We've got Maelstrom Pulse and Putrefy as versatile removal spells. That can also hit some non-creature permanents. And at 4 mana, we've got Extinction Events and Ritual of Soot as two powerful sweepers. The reason we're choosing for these specific sweepers is that they don't kill Belladros Witherbloom, unlike something like Languish, and then Hagramalling more removal that can also be played as a land, and Vraska's Contempt as instant speed removal that exiles a creature or planeswalker and gains two life. 
Then we've got Oracle of Moldiah, which can provide a ton of extra card advantage by letting us play lands off the top of our deck. And with all the shuffle effects, with our search cards and our fetch lands, we can easily manipulate the top of our deck if we don't like what we see. We've got a Wilderness Reclamation as a way to untap all our lands, similar to Belladros' ability. Now we cannot use a Reclamation to untap our lands in our main phase and cast more Sorcery Speed spells, so it does kind of limit us to using Mana Sinks that we can use at instant speed or cast instants during the opponent's turn. So it's not quite as flexible as Belladros' ability, but of course we don't have to pay 10 life for it, so we still have plenty of Mana Sinks built into our mana base with lands we can activate to leverage the extra mana from Reclamation. Then we've got Mortality Spear as more removal that only costs 2 mana if we gained life this turn, and Vraska, Golgari Queen, Planeswalker that can come down and act as removal, and we can potentially sacrifice the best tokens through the plus 2 ability to draw a card and gain 1 life. Then at 5 mana we've got an extra Sweeper with Crux of Fate, another Sweeper that can potentially avoid killing our own Belladros if we name a non-dragon, and then Thranktusk, a nice way to gain 5 life, so it can offset the pay 10 life ability on Belladros as well as Elder Gergroth, a powerful creature that can also be used to gain life if we decide to. And then uh, topping off our curve, we've got a lot of Planeswalkers to help us close out the game, and more ways to also gain life. Find Finality, we can use Finality as an extra sweeper that doesn't kill Belladros, as we can put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and Find as a way to get 2 creatures back from the graveyard. Then we've got our powerful Planeswalkers with Liliana Dreadhorde General, can draw a ton of cards if our pest tokens end up dying. We've got Professor Onyx with plenty of non-creature spells to trigger Magecraft. Primeval Bounty, a way to leverage our extra land drops to gain life, to potentially use Belladros' ability once again, and can also generate beast tokens and distribute plus on plus one counters if we cast non-creature spells. We've got Garruk Cursed Huntsman, which can make wolf tokens and potentially be used as removal. Then we've got Vraska Relic Seeker as another versatile removal spell that can also generate 2-2 pirate tokens with menace. We've got Casualties of War that can destroy an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, and planeswalker all at the same time. We've got Plain White Celebration, which can help us ultimate one of our planeswalkers faster by proliferating a few times. We can also use it to gain life to offset Belladros' ability, make 2-2 two -two tokens, and or return permanence from our graveyard to our hand. We've got Thorn Mammoth as one of the better synergies with Belladros, as whenever the Thorn Mammoth or another creature enters a battlefield under our control, Thorn Mammoth fights up to one target creature we don't control, so this can keep triggering whenever we generate a pest token, potentially decimating the opponent's board. And then Palaka Worm gains 7 life when it enters a battlefield, so a nice way to offset the 10 life. And then last but not least, Harness Infinity to exchange our hand and graveyard, and we can even cast it as an instant, so perfect alongside Belladros. And then going over the mana base, plenty of one-offs, a few highlights. We've got Castle Lochthwain as a potential card draw engine. Of course, uh, Castle Garenbrick also perfect for ramping out Belladros a turn sooner. We've got a few dual lands, and then some colorless lands with activated abilities, including Arch of Raska to draw cards. We've got Blast Zone as removal. We've got the Enclave, which can also draw extra cards if we control a creature with power 4 or greater. Then we've got Crawling Barons, which can turn into a creature, and can potentially get quite large if we sink a ton of mana into it. And then Field of the Dead, of course, one of the build-around cards of the deck. We've got Scavenger Grounds, which can exile graveyards, and the Biblioplex can potentially draw extra instants and sorceries, or put unwanted cards in our graveyard. So no shortage of activated abilities in our mana base. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Valky, God of Lies, slash Tybalt. And we've got a Keeper here. Two Ram spells with Beneath the Sands and Roiling Regrowth. Can fetch a forest right away. They could potentially play a Valky and take my Palaka Worm. It's gonna be a Rat Colony instead, all right. So, opponent might have a few of those in the deck, which means finding a Sweeper could be important, although once we get Beldros in play, the Pests also line up favorably against a Rat Colony. Turn two into the north allows the turn three root which will help us get Belladros in play even sooner. Cling to Dust will draw the opponent a card. And do we see a second Wrath? We do not. 
All right, let's play out a route. And then we want to get a regular forest and might as well get the gate. Solemn gonna ramp the opponent. But yeah, everything is ready for us to play Wither Bloom plus Palaka Worm in the same turn. Which is not a bad sequence. Gain 7 life back, make a pest. And now the Enclave is also turned on to draw extra cards. Could technically activate Wither Bloom in the opponent's turn just to draw a card. Although 10 life is a pretty steep price to pay for one card. Varogoth makes an appearance. Can maybe boast to find an answer next turn. Price of Fame takes out Belladros. Thing that resolves. We still have plenty of ramp in hand to help us replay Belladros in the future. But this is usually what happens when we play out our Elder Dragon. Maybe makes a pest, but then quickly ends up dying. Alrighty, so what do we want to do this turn? 7, potentially 8 mana available. I can Roiling Regrowth, I could cycle Beneath the Sands first maybe. Doomblade, not great in this matchup, could take out Solemn. But uh, I think I'm just going to play the Signets. Play Tapped Grove, and then we keep up the option of casting Roiling Regrowth, or we can activate the Enclave. Right, we're gonna see Tybalt Cosmic Imposter. It's gonna exile Placa Worm, a responsible draw. And Vraska, not a bad draw. Opponent unable to boast Varagoth at least. So let's see. Can play Belladros, untap our lands, play Vraska. Can only hit Tybalt for one at most. But um, yeah, I like replaying Belladros. Can float a mana first before untapping. So if I play Vraska, I still have the mana to use Enclave, so maybe do that first. Heartless Act could take out Rat Colony, but still doesn't let us take out Tybalt. So just gonna Vraska. Plus. And I'll send. Past that Tybalt. Have to be a little careful that we don't end up dying here at 4 life. But we've got 3 blockers. Tybalt pluses, revealing Valkyrie and Cold Steel Heart. That's manageable. They will still be able to play Palaka Worm in the future, but we can Doomblade that. Midnight Reaper. So opponent not opting for Palaka Worm, attacks with all. Going face. Well, we can make some blocks here. Put the pass in front of Varagoth. Trade for the Simulacrum. Could also take two, but then we might be dead to a burn spell. So this might be a little safer, even though we might be unable to finish off Tybalt if they have an answer for Wither Bloom. We'll try this. Midnight Reaper will draw a few cards. Varagoth can boast to find a perfect card. And I guess the Midnight Reaper will make it so they can draw whatever they boast into. So they could get a 2 mana removal spell to finish off Belladros. So that's also the risk of taking the damage is that 
I think we just search for a burn spell here. Alright, so our opponent got to draw three, and one of those they got to search out of their deck. And yeah, Lightning Bolts, of course, also available now. Alright, so we get to untap. Opponent still has a Tybalt at three loyalty. And Vraska doesn't take out Planeswalkers. But we're pretty close to ultimating Vraska as well, which is also pretty strong. And I can still replay Belladros. So, I think it's just going to be plus Vraska, replay Belladros, and then try to close out the game with Vraska's ultimates. Belladros making pest tokens makes it easier to connect and deal that last point of damage. Our opponent could boast with Varagoth and then plus Tybalt to kind of find a perfect card to exile and answer Vraska. So that's most likely what we'll see here. Tybalt pluses first instead, leaves things up to chance. Torment of Hailfire could be kind of scary. Opponent can cast it for six, I can discard a few cards, maybe sacrifice some pests. But they need to find a solution to Vraska first. Terror of the Peaks, okay, that could deal direct damage. A rat colony deals two, so can go after Vraska to prevent an ultimate. That'll work. Varogoth and Reaper attack. Next turn we can take out Tur of the Peaks to finish off Tybalt's. This seems acceptable. and draws a few more cards. Alright. So, we can take out Tybalt if we use both removal spells. Might have to keep some cards in hand for this Torment of Hailfire. Kick things off by drawing with Enclave. Ooh, Professor Onyx. That's a good one. So we can play Professor, which can get rid of the Terror of the Peaks. And then could cast a spell, although that's too few cards in hand to discard to a Torment, even though we trigger Magecraft to take out a Rat Colony. Alternatively, I can use Vraska to kill the Colony, so we can finish off Tybalt. I think I'll be fine just casting the removal spell. And then making a pirates. Finish off Tybalt's. And then hopefully we have enough pests and pirates to sacrifice here so we don't die to a torment. And we've taken over control of the board now. So very close game. Or Brask giving the team haste. Where our creatures also come into play tapped. And a Valkyrie, which flies. So that has to go after Vraska. Yeah, they have to go after Vraska, otherwise we can ultimate to close out the game. So this attack seems ambitious. Right, both at Vraska. And one at Onyx, but we can jump for Brask or trade if we want. So just a Valkyrie for Vraska. That happens. Mauling can take out Valkyrie or Urabrask. And yeah, we can plus Onyx. See what we find. Plain White Celebration seems perfect. That'll let me ultimate a Relic Seeker by proliferating four times. Ultimates. 
Opponent goes to one, attack with everyone, and that's game. Sweet, very close one here against Tybalt. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Anax as the opponent's commander. And yeah, this hand seems fine. Get a little bit of ramp with the regrowth and then plenty of creature interaction against presumably an aggressive creature deck. So we'll get this tap land out of the way. A Blooming Marsh comes into play untapped next turn. And Steamkin, definitely a worthy candidate for Bloodchief's Thirst. So next turn I can play the Forest and then sacrifice it to the Regrowth. Get a Forest and a Swamp. Or we can use Beanstalk Giants, also works. And get a Swamp. Got a snow-covered swamp, next time we'll get a regular swamp to diversify a bit in case of uh, Field of the Dead. Light with stage, finds a Dwarven Mine and a Shield Breaker, luckily no artifacts in play. Opponent turns out a Paraling, so we could wipe the board with Crux of Fate. I think I prefer taking out Annex first so the opponent doesn't get a ton of Seder tokens. So, let's do that. Pass a turn with the intention of killing Annex and then the next turn casting Crux of Fate. So hopefully they commit more creatures to the board here. Opponent moves to combats. They attack. I could take the extra damage from Annex just to avoid the opponent replaying it. So I'll take the three. Alright, a lightning strike to give the powerling plus one and double strike. Alright, now I probably can afford to death sprout annex as he wouldn't be able to replay it. And we'll get a snow covered forest. Probably gonna see the shield breaker before it goes away. Alright, Field of Ruins, kinda problematic if we find Field of the Dead. So we'll Crux of Fates on non dragon. Won't be able to use Baldros's ability anytime soon. So otherwise, we could have uh, played Baldros, paid 10 life. And then cast Crux of Fate and still have Baldros in play, but at 5 life against Monoret, that's probably too dangerous. Opponent replace Annex. Desert puts us to 14. So probably just play Beanstalk Giants instead of Baldros. And then next turn play our Dragon, which is then more likely to survive. And then Evolving Wilds can be a nice way to potentially trigger Field of the Dead twice. So that's why I'm saving it. Kind of hoping the opponent uses the Field of Ruin on one of the lands we already have in play. So that's why I'm slow rolling the Enclave, which I think is slightly better. Hungry Flames. Plus maybe another Burn Spell here. To finish off our beanstalk, but that's still a fine trade for us. Essentially a 3 for 1. And then now we can play Baldros and hopefully have it stick around for a while. Yeah, I guess I'll play the Evolving Wilds now. Opponent's down to two cards in hand. And our opponent packs it in. Baldros is gonna take over with our pests. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing green mana. Although, as soon as we find a single green source, Omen can find another. And we do have the scribe from Maze Mind Tome to help out, so I think it's still keepable. 
up against the Golos Tireless Pilgrim. So five color ramp deck. Alright, there's our green mana. Seems worth playing here. So we can omen next turn. Turn to search for Ascanta. And a Karyotid we could kill with Thirst next turn. Get another green source. Okay, so how about play an untapped land so I can Tome Draw and Thirst. Since I don't have a 6 drop I need to cast next turn so I can afford to play my untapped land now. And then Doomblade also, potential answer to Golos, which is undoubtedly going to find the Field of the Dead. Mastermind's Acquisition can search for anything. Alright, Hydra, I guess now I'm one mana short of casting. But we can play next turn to find our own field. And then we'll main phase draw with Tome. And I guess we can also just draw Field of the Dead. Any advantage to playing it now? Yeah, I guess if we find an untapped land, I can play Belladros next turn with Field already in play. So we'll pass. And then I might put an upkeep stop, or I could sacrifice Omen to Scry. There's Golos. Finds Field of the Dead. So Hydra finds a land, but it's tapped. So I wouldn't be able to necessarily Belladros into Hydra plus Doomblade. So I should really try to find an untapped land, but at the same time I also want to kill Golos. So I think the play is going to be Doomblade and then upkeep Scry as opposed to Sack Omen. And that way I'll be able to Belladros plus Hydra. And if we fail to find an untapped land, I can still just Hydra. Putrefy is not bad, but land would be better. Alright, perfect. Now we already have a snow-covered swamp in play, sadly, so this is not going to trigger Field of the Dead right now. But still seems worthwhile. Untap my lands, play Hydra. And that can find another land. And which land should that be? I'm guessing Field of Ruin to answer deposing Field of the Dead. Could use Baldros again to kill the Field of the Dead right now, but that's a pretty steep investment. So we'll wait and see. Opponent replays Golos. So that'll trigger Field of the Dead again. Opponent might get their own Field of Ruin. So if I were to use Belladros now, I can untap my lands, use Field of Ruin on Field of the Dead, make an extra zombie myself. And then I can still use that mana to cast Hagra Mauling on Golos, Sack Omen. Might actually be worth it, all things considered. And then I want to get a regular forest or swamp. We'll go with a regular forest. So we'll see what land they get. We've got a pretty sizable army building up here. So opponent's close to dead. Abundant harvest. Okay. So opponent got the world tree to make it easier to activate goals, but they're not going to get a chance to. And then scry omen. 
And our opponent concedes, yeah, they're just too far behind on board. Even though it costs us 20 life, the mana advantage that Witherbloom provides is definitely worth it in some matchups. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Prime Speaker Venifar. This hand would be pretty strong if we had green mana. We do have a treasure map to scry towards it. I think it's worth the risk, just because Haven into Path is potentially a great start. And then find finality can maybe wipe up the board. Perfect draw. So turn to Haven into turn three migration. Sets up turn four Witherbloom. Visionary sets up Vanifar. But we'll have an answer at the ready. So we'll get regular forest and snow-covered forests. And we can even play Witherbloom into finality here. So this is going to be sweet. Untap. Could also opt to just putrefy Vanifar and then treasure maps cry. Although I kind of like the idea of casting Finality, putting two counters on Witherbloom. And not killing any of our own creatures while dealing with a Visionary. And then we can keep our spot removal for later, and our opponent packs it in. Alright, so pretty decisive victory here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Yarok. And yeah, we've got a nice hand, a couple ramp cards, and a Hydra to find Field of the Dead. Turn two, gonna see Gilded Goose. Could be a worthy candidate for Heartless Sank, but I think I prefer developing my own mana first. So we'll do that. And then between Haven and Signet, it doesn't matter too much, but I guess we can Haven first. No basic land to enchant, which is usually preferable. Opponents got their own Signet. And a Guardian Idol, so... Bit of ramp 2 here. So I can cast Death Sprout if we play the Deadlands. Yeah, I guess we'll keep up that sprout here. Could even cast Hagra Mauling for three before the opponent played the basic here. So Yarok will take out, keep on ramping. And gets, I guess a swamp is fine, so we don't have to pay life from the Deadlands as much. Okay, so we have the mana to cast Hydra and get Field with the Dead. And next turn we can play Witherbloom out. So that looks good to me. Uro providing a bit of ramp and life gain. Still waiting for kind of a big play we can make after we resolve Belladros. So currently it doesn't seem worth it to pay the life. So we'll pass it back. If the opponent takes out with her bloom, we can still replay it next turn. And we do have a few mana sinks with Arch and Enclave at least. Conti's a good one. Just gonna have a look at our top four cards and select one of them that they can play. Field of Ruin, not bad. 
Can take out a land and trigger a field of the dead once again. Although I'm probably going to start by drawing with Enclave, see what we pick up. Right, harvest on non land. Contempt, so we've got plenty of removal. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to pay the 10 life just yet. Goose makes a food. Gonna let the goose live. Can also eventually take it out with Ifner Deadlands if we want. Wilderness Reclamation, okay. Good alongside mana sinks like Gilded Goose. Do I want to take out the goose now by chance? I think I'll just use the Field of Rune instead. And then go for the command tower. Putrefy takes out Witherbloom. I'll allow it. Make a zombie. And it might be worth it to take out Gonti just so we can keep beating down with our tokens. Can use Mauling. Or we can replay Wither Bloom and then maybe untap some lands and do the same. But yeah, opponent seen enough. Feel of the Dead plus Wither Bloom, just too much for them to handle. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Sahili, so Blue Rats spells deck. Our hand's not particularly great for the matchup, no ramp, a bunch of removal that might be ineffective. This is better. So turn 3 we can ramp with our Beanstalk, turn 4 either Search or some Lacrim. Into the north a turn later to the party. Get a regular forest. So we are looking at a turn 5 Witherbloom. Which can then untap our lands to maybe cast the Vraska after. Or Professor Onyx, both are great. So, yep, yeah, let's keep ramping. So, we want regular swamp and then, I guess, snow covered forests. Put on taps out for Midnight Clock. So, we don't need to fear any counter spells here. Which is good. So play Wither Bloom. Even have an extra mana before we use the ability. Play Onyx, I think, and then we can still into the north trigger Onyx. Let me cast this before using Onyx's ability. And then. All of these options could be good. Crux of Fate, a pretty clean answer for any non-dragons the opponent has. Find Finality. Can maybe put some counters on Wither Bloom, although might put it in range of a cheap burn spell. Let's take the Crux of Fate. Come on, there's gotta be something useful. So a pretty big discrepancy in mana here. And our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against Tiny Bones, so a discard deck. Well, we do want some ramp and lands, so we don't miss our land drops. This hand has two lands and some four mana potential ramp cards. If we miss lands three and four, we're gonna be in trouble. Do have Thirst as an early answer for Tiny Bones. 
but that might be taken away by a discard effect, so it's not actually a great hand. I would much rather have a hand with more lands and cheaper ramp cards, but I think I'll still try it. And then we're just going to hang on to our ramp cards and discards our expensive cards that are probably going to be gone by the time we get to it. Dark Ritual, okay. Opponent's got four mana for Disciple, plus Tiny Bones probably. Could also get rid of Extinction Event and keep Onyx in case we do manage to string together Surge into Professor. And then next turn Thirst on Tiny Bones will suffice. All right, let's see if there's more discard. Opponent passes and we get to untap, cast a vast with surge, which also sets up Hour of Promise beautifully. So we'll get swamp and maybe a regular swamp. So yeah, next turn Hour of Promise already triggers Field of the Dead, which is pretty hard to beat for a discard deck, as every top deck threatens to make a zombie token. But maybe they have a discard effect to snipe it before we can deploy it. Opponent passes. So yeah, time for Hour of Promise. Even though we could play Professor Onyx, I think this is still better. Opponent might be hanging on to a bunch of removal in hand. And we're gonna get Field of the Dead plus probably a fetch land. Could also get a land that draws, but we have Castle already. So fetch land seems better. Get Fabled Passage. Make two zombies. And make another one. Alright. Even if they discard my hand, we'll still be in good shape thanks to Castle Lockthwain drawing cards. And, of course, we can play Wither Bloom as well. Okay, so... Start attacking with our zombies, see what happens. Bone probably has a few sweepers in hand, so I don't necessarily want to overextend. They probably have removal for Planeswalkers as well. So if I play Wither Bloom... I could pay the 10 life, it's gonna get killed, so I still get to untap my lands if I want, play Onyx. I guess that's still good enough. I don't think I crack my fetch land yet, question is whether I play out this other land. Yeah, that might be worth it. Alright, Soul Shatter takes out Wither Bloom, but not before we untap all our lands. I could even replay Wither Bloom here if I want. But getting Onyx in play seems good too. Plus, find Torment of Hailfire. Yes, please. Alright, so now the goal is to try and play Wither Bloom and then untap once again to cast a huge Torment of Hailfire to end the game. Unlikely to work out when the opponent has discard effects available. Okay, Massacre Girl wipes the board as expected. But we can still make a zombie end of turn thanks to our Fabled Passage. And then I could, even if I wanted to, draw with Castle, but then I might not be able to pay the 10 life for Wither Bloom. So, hold on tap. And then plus. Find, I guess Omen is fine. Just one more mana. Take out Massacre Girl. 
make a zombie hit for two. And maybe we can just cast a Torment of Hailfire without Wither Bloom in play here. And there's Tiny Bones. And that's it. All right. Search for another land. So we're at 11. Don't think I need to play around any direct damage. So let's float all our mana. Play with her bloom. Won't be able to plus Professor Onyx. But I can untap all my lands. We're at 1. Float again. 8 plus 8 is 16, so 14. Looks good. Suppose we could have minus Liliana first. But we can plus once we get a Magecraft trigger here. And our opponent concedes to a Torment of Hailfire for 14. Opponent has 5 cards they can discard, 1 creature they can sacrifice, leaving 8 triggers, which will be more than enough to close out the game here. Sweet. Alright, so we got to see our Wither Bloom deck in action. Definitely saw the importance of the early ramp cards, so we can quickly deploy our Elder Dragon, untap our lands, and potentially deploy a second big threat in the same turn. That way, even if the opponent does have an immediate answer for Belladros, we can still potentially pull ahead with the second card we managed to play in the same turn. So that's one way our deck can gain an advantage. And then, of course, Field of the Dead, another very important angle of attack, especially against the more controlling decks, where counter spells line up well against our expensive 7 mana dragon. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.